Hours in Chasum Sujit Reaction, this is Strobe Talk, Prison Break, by the channel Oli Sakashik Proxon. Yes, it's like an awesome topic. Uh, the Prison Break is like some of the flamboyant and I guess, it depends on how you implement it. Uh, I guess uh, the one thing that does come to mind is the show. Have you seen the uh, TV show Prison Break? <laughs> because I, don't, I wasn't sure about that at first I watched it. But then it kind of became fun in a way. Right? But by the end of it, it was just like, you can't shake off the feeling like it's all about prison break. Right? Like, what type of absurd excuse you have to come about that all, all your people are constantly in prison and they have to break out constantly. One, two, three, like this, something is ridiculous. But I guess in real life, if I were to think about prison break, is that that guy who was, I think it's El, wait a minute, it's not Pablo Escobar, it's El Chapo. El Chapo, I think that's what his name is. Right? First I learned about him, I guess, at uh, John Oliver's show, right? But it's just ridiculous, like, how he escaped in many things. He just uh, dig out of his way here and there, like, uh, Shawshank Redemption type of shit. Yeah, somebody uh, found out that, you know, he dug a tunnel somewhere. Like, it was just ridiculous. But then I realized, like, he did there a lot of things in, I guess, places like Mexico and a lot of other places. Now, I don't know. I feel like corruption might be involved. Because uh, the Shawshank Redemption thing feels absurd. You can't just dig out a tunnel and nobody notice. That doesn't that doesn't work, right? So people has to look away if you're gonna do that or some shit. I don't know. So <laughs> prison break is a really wacky topic. In prison break has always involved in any genres, right? Even the animated like Batman shit, like Arkham. People constantly break out of Arkham in here and there, right? So. <laughs> Yeah, Prison Break can be fun. I'm pretty sure it was a Prison Break in GTA 4's DLC. Was it in DLC? Yeah, it was DLC, right? Uh, Lost and Found. Lost and something. That was the biker gang thing, which was awesome as well. But yeah, I guess it depends. But it's always fun somewhat. So let's watch this one. Remember, if you like my reaction, don't forget to subscribe. So I know which type of videos to react tomorrow. I love Trop Talk. I've done quite a few Trop Talk reactions already. So if you haven't seen them, check out the link in the description. And yeah, let's do it. This episode is sponsored by World Anvil. Thanks for smuggling the ad copy in inside this cake. If you were to analyze literature from the absolute most broad strokes perspective possible, you might quickly come to the conclusion that most stories are about people who don't want to be wherever they currently are. Whether that's a vague existential malaise, or a highly specific antagonistic threat, everything. or a general I want song, or a hero's journey hitting the consequences for their refusal of the call. That applies to everything apart from hobbits, I guess. <laughs> hobbits always give the feeling like they're just, they're just happy where they are, but they just, they just have to do this journey and getting their home village burned down, most characters get their plot kicked off by wanting to be somewhere that isn't where they are right now. In the rare stories where this isn't the case, the hero tends to be uprooted anyway and then spends the rest of the yeah, story they, wanting to Mr. go Shire. back to where they started, which conveniently loops right back into not wanting to be where they are right now. Now this school of broad scale analysis is fun, reductive, and typically pointless, but today it's going to help us highlight a fun space of stories that are basically this principle boiled down into its purest form. When you want to explore how a character handles being stuck somewhere they really, really don't want to be right now, you might want to put them in a prison break plot. In fiction, prisons most commonly appear as locations where villains are non-lethally disposed of and or break out of to become problems. Their security and impenetrability Batman. is commonly <laughs> bragged of, but usually quickly disproven when the bad guys break out easily. I love Batman's concept. Batman doesn't kill bad people. Yeah, he just imprisoned them so they can get out and kill more people and rinse and repeat and or repeatedly. Jokes are often made at their expense and characters might become self-aware of how prisons seem absolutely useless at actually keeping any major villains from being problems. While the in-universe Watsonian purpose of these prisons is to detain villains, the doyalist reason these prisons exist is to both give the heroes a way to get rid of their bad guys without having to do some straight up extrajudicial murdering about it and to facilitate a rotating uh. rogues gallery of bad guys to cycle in and out whenever the writer wants to mix up the plot. The prison is basically little more than a villain storage facility. So when the writer wants to bring back an old favorite problem child they'll just go from being safely imprisoned to effortlessly breaking out in the space of 10 minutes so they can make a nuisance of themselves for a few episodes sometimes an extra spicy bad guy will break out only once under extraordinary circumstances and then be defeated for good before being placed back on the shelf for potential future use villain prison mm. breaks tend to be quick and painless usually just serving as an inciting incident for the heroes to respond to however none of this quick and easiness applies when the heroes are the ones breaking out the prison break plot is a stock episode format where at least one major character is imprisoned 
almost always by an antagonist, and the plot is them escaping, sometimes with outside help. It has hefty overlap with both the damsel in distress and the heist plot, kind of a fusion of the two where the heisted MacGuffin is a character who can play an active role in the proceedings. The core appeal of the Prison Break plot is the process by which the characters bypass or overcome the prison's security measures before making their clever escape. And while it's a fun thought experiment in isolation, it also presents a unique space of interesting character potential by putting all the characters involved in a very tense situation that automatically casts them as underdogs against him. Yeah, by the way, whenever bad guy escapes the prison, right, it's it's not shown as some big feat. Oh my god, look at that, like even prison couldn't contain him, and th that's it. When a good guy breaks out of prison, it's like all this anticipation and all the, you know, things and all the pressure put on it, like, oh, it's a big feat. I always thought about it, like, why is that the case? Then I realized, like, I mean, bad guy could have just killed people. Could just could have just I guess killed the you know guards and things and just basically walked out or some shit right makes sense he's a bad guy but good guys don't do that so good guys has to break out of prison without hurting people so that kind of puts like you know imagine playing a video game without actually killing somebody like playing something like Metro where I, there's actually a moral system where you can't kill anybody that game becomes insanely hard so it's some element like that an overwhelmingly powerful and dispassionate threat, a situation that most characters are not accustomed to. Because of this, the Prison Break plot usually works best as an episodic installment of a longer-running series, where an established cast of characters and the audience is already that. familiar with Prison plans a breakout break or rescue, and the audience gets to see them handle the unique challenges and stressors of the subplot. But it can also work in other contexts, like a character origin, the plot of an action movie, the first third of a bigger action plot line. It can even be a cold open that starts the rest of the story, or how the band gets together before the big adventure. It's a versatile little chestnut but probably because it's basically what you get if you boil down internal character conflict to its absolute most concentrated form. Character doesn't want to be where they are, antagonist wants to keep them where they are, conflict ensues. As a stock episode, the Prison Break plot has certain elements that very rarely change. The big one is the authority. This is the force keeping our hero or heroes imprisoned. This authority capturing those heroes is the inciting incident for this plot. The authority is usually a vast nebulous force like a government or other legal system, but it'll typically be personified by individual representatives like wardens someone who can put a face and personality to the otherwise distant and massive antagonistic figure that backs the prison. The authority can And somehow they have to be a dick. All the wardens have to be a dick. That's the thing, right? I mean, if they're not a dick, they're shown as some like uh, uh, some principal or some hard ass guy. They have to be that a full-blown evil overlord and corresponding evil empire, but it can also be a completely neutral party that's just enforcing its own laws in a way that the heroes don't like, which ties into the second factor, the reason. This is why the authority imprisons the protagonist, and it's usually not given too much focus after the initial inciting incident. Maybe the protagonist unknowingly broke some local law, or very knowingly broke some universal law, or they got unjustly framed by some enemy, but the reason can also be something internally villainous, like the authority is innately evil and captured a good guy for for being not evil, or gladiator combat is super rad, or prison industrial complex bad actually. The reason doesn't generally factor into the plot too much, it's not like the heroes will get a chance to disprove it in a court of law or find a reasonable authority figure to help them out if the plot is determined to make a prison break happen, but the reason can sometimes add a ticking clock that the heroes need to work around if it incorporates an authority mandated time limit, like a public execution or getting shipped off to an even more impenetrable prison. And then there's the defenses. This is the most tangible, plot relevant element to the story because it's what the heroes are going to need to work around to do the prison break. Wardens, guards, locks. This is where the Ocean's Eleven st style of music plays in the background to tell you the plan. Surveillance, controls, laser grids, all of that is here in the problem zone. The defenses are usually touted as impenetrable and the main challenge for the heroes is going to be figuring out how to penetrate them, either from the outside to break in or with a bit more difficulty just from the inside to break out. The defenses are usually where the writer's creativity shines, because they're basically the practical antagonist of the story, and they're what makes the prison interesting. Prisons in these stories usually have at least one fantastical gimmick to make it more unique than Big Locked Door. How will your heroes escape if the prison is housed in an active volcano, or the middle of the ocean, or floating in space? What if there are electric floors, or they have to do gladiatorial combat, or it's the entire island of Manhattan? The more buckwild the prison, the more fun it can be to figure out how to break it. It's why escape rooms aren't just featureless boxes with number puzzles and combination locks. The gimmicks are what make it fun. There are a couple other elements of the story that are optional depending on the format. One of those is the friends on the outside, any allies that the imprisoned character might have coming to their rescue. This is pretty common, but it's not universal, since some breaks are completely internal with no cavalry on the way. And it can be pretty dramatic, albeit very difficult, to have a character figure out how to break themselves out all on their own when the prison is specifically designed to make that impossible. But in case- Yeah, but like I said, that uh, a good guy breaks Breaking out of prisons, 
has to do that uh, without hurting anybody so without alerting anything so cavalry doesn't make sense cavalry means like a bad guy right how gonna hurt and to distract some whatever that's rare thing right that's not as impressive as just doing things undetected right and prison breaks are like i said you know can be really clever and that always works like a recent movie i saw about uh who, who I think it was the you know Rock and the other Deadpool ca- actor I forgot his name apparently, Reynolds Ryan Reynolds the Raid Notice I think it was the movie right Netflix one uh, they also had some kind of a prison break in it right it just like adds a element to it and that's just like it's always clever like a prison is supposed to keep you in prison is supposed to make sure like maximum security prison you're not supposed to escape it then you escape oh that's good like it's automatically a win so adding something like that it always works. This is where friends on the outside are coming to help, they often end up meeting the imprisoned character halfway, running into them breaking out while they're breaking in. And the other optional element is the friend on the inside, a fellow prisoner who helps out the imprisoned protagonist, usually physically defending them and or teaching them how things work on the inside that is always and the, the other case. helpful mentor tidbits they might know. In stories where the prison has a notably complicated gimmick, it's very helpful to have one of these guys around to get the characters and audience up to speed on what exactly is going on. The friend friend on the inside is usually either a big guy or a wise old mentor, and both of these stock characters have remarkably high fatality rates, so the friend on the inside stands a pretty good chance of dying on the way out, which is tragic and poignant and stuff. Not necessarily. Like a mentor, a big big guy, that's not necessarily. The, I think the resourceful guy is more of an inside guy, usually. Right? The guy who, who knows the place, who, who was there before you, uh, who can get shit done, knows a few people, that kind of guy but not necessarily strong enough or witty enough, right? So there's a high chance he might die during the escape or some shit like that. Also saves the writer the trouble of figuring out what else to do with him, which is convenient. Now, like all heist-adjacent plots, the prison break follows the unspoken plan guarantee, which is that thing where if the characters explain their plan on screen, anything the audience sees is guaranteed to be disrupted or get interrupted or otherwise go wrong. But if the characters just say something like, here's what we're gonna do, and then the camera pans out so the audience doesn't see their explanation, then whatever the character's plan has a good chance of success. This is less of a trope and more of a phenomenon that naturally arises from certain elements of storytelling. If the audience has already heard the entire I mean <laughs> if if it's not successful then like it's if it's like a smart ass isn't it like here's the thing and the movie doesn't tell you what's happening <laughs> and do, doing something like ting or something that hits him in the air oh it failed that would be so catastrophic right if something's going to fail they have to show you so at least you know there is a chance something will fail and then it fails when you don't know what's gonna happen then you see things unraveling and it fails that's just like way worse so that's why it has to succeed plan, seeing the plan play out as described is going to be redundant for them. But if the audience doesn't have all the information, seeing the plan play out can still be excitingly tense, since the audience doesn't know which parts are planned and which ones aren't. Maybe the mastermind getting captured is the plan going wrong, or maybe it was the plan all along. Maybe one of the characters has gone rogue and sold out the team, or maybe they've coordinated it to look like that so they earn the villain's trust. As long as the audience doesn't know the plan, anything could be the plan. So when a prison break plot is happening, the less the audience knows about the plan, the better chance it has of succeeding. Mm. And in contrast, if we get the full rundown of everything there is to know about the prison and exactly how they're going to break in and out, it's pretty much guaranteed that nothing is going to go how it's laid out on paper. Guards will change up their patrol. But that is an exception. See, if there is an antagonist, or not just antagonist, as the guy who's supposed to keep you in, but he's also like one of the figure, like it's not some guy, like some warden, but some shown as some powerful figure, like smart. And if a plot is not, you know, shown to you, right and it plays out and it fails and then they get caught and this warden basically uh, tells them is this what you were gonna do and just lays out all the plan implying that he knew what they were gonna do in the first place that kind of works but that is a rarity but then the audience is shown what they were planning and warden already figured it out Roots, or an unexpected mini boss will turn up, or it'll turn out that the bad guy knew about the plan all along and took steps to specifically thwart it. Whatever the specifics, if we <laughs> know the plan, the plan the chair is, is so work. funny, it's just a fun quirk of the medium. There are a few common bonus tropes that sometimes get worked into this plot to make things interesting. Most common is the captured on purpose plan. The easiest way to break mm. in to break somebody out is to just get the bad guys to do most of the hard work of getting them in in the first place. So someone gets captured on purpose. That's Usually the with a connection movie. What is to the that? Outside break or a friend prison? Something? A guard, I don't know the name the bad of it. Guys don't know 
know about or some other leg up they can arrange by controlling the circumstances under which they're captured. Villains really like doing this one, but when a bad guy does it, they can get away with having the most absolutely ridiculous contingencies, like somehow having redirected an entire train or orchestrating it so something blows up at exactly the right time when they had no way of knowing where they would be and when. But that sort of diabolus ex machina privilege is reserved for the bad guys only, and the good guys are lucky if they can get away with a single friend dressed as a guard who doesn't screw up the secret password and get captured immediately. But sometimes the rescue mission goes awry when it turns out the imprisoned character is not just captured. Turns out some other horrible thing has happened to them, like maybe they've been brainwashed or unethically experimented on, or they've even turned to the dark side of their own free uh, will. Okay. To preserve the twist, the imprisoned character is usually not shown during the key parts of the story, which can make this closer to a typical damsel rescue than a proper prison break. For extra angst, sometimes this happens to them because they helped with a different prison escape, and whoever they helped is trying to return the favor, only to find that their rescuer is in even worse straits than before. In the more tragic cases, this can make the whole scenario a shaggy dog story where everything they did was pointless, but in most cases it just adds an extra layer of spice and character drama to the rescue. And the grandest scale variant is probably I Said I Break the Prison, where the heroes don't just escape, they prompt a massive prison break where the entire facility is emptied. This basically Chaos. only happens in cases where the antagonistic force is a cartoonishly evil empire, or the prison is otherwise completely unambiguously awful and there are absolutely no complexities to the conflict, but you do sometimes get cases where the heroes don't break it completely, but they do some kind of prison reform once they get out, like making sure the one nasty warden's awfulness is exposed yeah. and the good people trying to run an ethical prison get put in charge. Your mileage may vary on how convincing you find that one. The prison break plot has a lot of moving parts that make it complicated. At the heart of it is the prison itself, which is functionally the antagonist of the entire plot, a hostile location that automatically places the protagonists in the role of underdog. The design of the prison is an opportunity for the writers to get really creative, so while some of them are pretty basic dungeons, some of them get really convoluted and present even more interesting challenges for the characters to solve. This trope really only has two things it's notably good at, an intriguing escape room puzzle box for the setting, and the character writing that this specific kind of stressful situation can facilitate. The imprisoned character or characters are stuck in a tense, arguably hopeless situation with very little control, which is a context that tends to reveal parts of a character that might not otherwise see the light of day. Stress and pressure and desperation can expose a lot of interesting complexities under the surface, and it's always fun to explore how a familiar character handles a new and unfamiliar situation. As a side effect of the odds being completely stacked against them, characters in this plotline might be driven to temporarily- mm, I like that uh, Riddick uh, trilogy, is it trilogy? I don't know how many, like Pitch Black was the first Riddick movie, right? And then there was like the Riddick. I don't know which Riddick movie it was, but uh, I guess he was in the prison. Then he, I don't know, was it his daughter or something? I don't know, he's supposed to escape with. The element I liked about that is like, there is another thing that prison break alone isn't enough. You escape the prison, now what? Like depending on what the location of the prison is. Like in that case, it was like uh, unhospitable planet or whatever. If the sun rays come, like it's supposed to be so scorching hot, it will burn you or something. So they were literally escaping the light, right? So some element like that, like, okay, you escape the prison, but that's not enough. Now, like if it's in the, in the middle of the sea or something, like you have to make sure of where the boats come and take the boats or something or go, uh, you know, anything. So that, that adds another layer, like prison escape is nothing, right? You still have to go to safety team up with characters they were previously at odds with, maybe even characters that are responsible for them being imprisoned in the first place, or vice versa, which can even kick off a full-on redemption arc if the team-up goes notably well. And the process of breaking the prison requires that the characters be clever, coordinated, sneaky, and subtle, which in more action-heavy stories can be a rare treat. And it's always fun to follow along with characters that are being smart, even if it can take a lot of work to write convincingly. The main difficulty with these stories is actually a little bit hard to spot. The thing is, prison break stories are usually good at at least one of the two main factors of the story, the clever escape or the fun character moments. And if it's notably good at one of those things, it can get a little hand wavy with the other. A prison break plot that gets really deep into exploring how the characters handle the imprisonment, the breakout, or the rescue can be fun to watch even if the prison is just a garden variety dungeon with a locked door and the actual breakout process is just a matter of knocking out guards and picking locks. And a really complicated prison with a ton of impenetrable defenses and wacky gimmicks can make for a very fun escape plot even if the actual characters are basically just puzzle solving machines perfectly 
quickly executing their clever escape. Sometimes a story nails both elements and you get a really good prison break where the prison itself is interesting and the character arcs are fascinating to watch. But sometimes these stories get a little bit wobbly in places, and it usually happens for the same reason all clever plan plots get wobbly, the simple fact that figuring out a genius plan is a tall order for a writer to pull off. There's a rule of thumb when writing mysteries that the writer always needs to know the solution before they start writing anything else, and it's not mm. just so the whole thing actually makes sense and is fair to the audience, it's also just way easier for the writer to work backwards from the solution to construct the problem than it is to try and solve the problem from scratch. Not to mm. mention that if you make a problem from scratch and then try to derive the solution, there's no guarantee that the problem even has a solution. The number yeah. one way to guarantee that a mystery can be solved is to start from the solution and then construct the mystery backwards. And prison break design is kind of in the same boat. Except not really. You can start with the prison and all its wacky gimmicks and try to figure out how it can be escaped, which is a fun thought experiment that a lot of people have a lot of fun with, speculating over how different security measures could be bypassed. And because a prison is not a problem designed to have a solution, this makes a lot of sense. But a lot of the time, it's just easier to start with the solution and work backwards. If you want the heroes to escape through the air vents, the air vents need to be imperfectly guarded. If you want them to short out the electrical system, the electrical system needs to be improperly insulated. If you want them to imper- I mean, it's your story. I mean, it makes sense. But let's be honest. Prison breaks is not something like just easily done. Prison are not supposed to be, you know, broken in the first place. You can't, you know, you're not supposed to break prison, right? I mean, if some of the things are really absurd, 99% of the things are absurd, like what people who are guarding prison and all the security, they're just morons. So it's, a, you know, it, like she says, it's better to, you know, go with the solution in the first place because then you can just move backward and cause loopholes that would work in your favor because you're the one constructing the story. It makes sense. And if you do it just right, I guess people won't know it like you did it that way. It will just make sense. Like, oh, this was the kid, so there you go. I guess you you do a really bad job of it, then people will notice, like, oh, come on, really? This is just absurd. Personate guards, the guards need to be bad enough at their jobs that they can ambush yeah. them and take their stuff. And while this makes for a cleaner, simpler solution, it undercuts the structure of the prison by building in a weakness for the characters to exploit. And the more obvious the solution, the less it makes sense that the prison design didn't account for it. Unlike I, mean, I guess it depends on how you approach it, right? I mean, uh, what is a weakness? Like, uh, uh, objects and things cannot have weakness because it has to be bulletproof. Otherwise, it's not a... Uh, high security prison is it so you can cause weakness with the humans and human psychology right uh, somebody exploiting some guy or something uh, because of some insecurities in and there or just helping them out corruption or something or uh, seeing the pattern in there basically humans can be an error right doesn't matter how, how high security a place is humans are always going to be a thing there and humans are prone to weaknesses so it depends on how you approach it if you approach it right it will work but if you just cause problems in actual or objects like wiring was bad or metal was rusted or something like that. Like, why, why wasn't that checked before? Like mysteries, puzzles, and good escape room praxis, when writing a prison break plotline, the best results usually come from stories that don't have the solution baked into the design. There's a fundamental difference between a character uncovering an inobvious solution that has always been there, like a detective solving a mystery, and a character piecing together a solution from a bunch of disparate elements that have never been combined in that way before. The first makes a good mystery, the second makes a good prison break. So, yeah. And yep, thanks again go. to World Anvil for sponsoring this video. Yeah, people, uh, go to worldanvil.com for us overly sarcastic and uh, support this channel, I guess. Uh, this is a good topic, prison break. It's like, uh, it's more broader topic than people wouldn't, you know, really think about it. Because let's be honest, a lot of thing you see has some element of prison break. Uh, even if it's not prison, it's just like, I don't know, uh, capturing a guy, holding them in some kind of an evil guy's basement also can consider as somewhat of a prison because it's like a fortified place in the first place, so they have to do similar thing. But a lot of things has a prison break element to it, and it's fun. And like she said, like if you go with the solution and backtrack it, uh, you can create weaknesses that just make sense. And I guess it's up to you, like how good you are at making them. If you just make like, okay, uh, those, uh, I don't know, metal bars were just weak and rusted, like that doesn't make sense. Like if it's a high security prison, why would somebody didn't check it? But if you expert humans, like some guard, like, I don't know, some guard needs help with something and you just knew it, like you exploited that or something. If you expert some scenario like that, or again, human error, where human patrol a place and you just find a, I don't know, pattern in it, another human issue. So if you just do all that, it kind of makes sense, but yeah. Well, that was Trope Talk, Prison Break by channel Ori Sarcastic Production. If you like my reaction, don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.